We made it yogis, welcome to day 10. Today we're gonna get started in a reclined position, so lying down on our backs. I'm going to invite you to bring either a bolster, pillow, towel, or some blocks. We're gonna get set started in supported fish pose. Um, so for this variation, you're, wanna, you're going to want to bring your blocks towards like um, a capital T, so one parallel to the back edge of your mat, and then one um, about the length of your mat. And the way we're gonna use these is we're gonna press our shoulder blades down to this first block, and then we're gonna rest our head on the back block. If this is like, if you don't have blocks, you don't feel like doing this, there's so many different options, so I'll walk through them, just be patient. You can always find your Supta Konasana, lying down on your backs, recline butterfly, butterfly pose, soles of your feet come together. So lots of options. We're gonna take several breaths to get set up here. So if something's not feeling right or not super comfortable, take a different variation. But you're gonna to start to slowly recline your body down. If you don't have blocks and you wanna still take this fish variation, you can press down through your forearms here and then just drop your head back. This is fish pose. Um, I really like using the blocks in this pose. It allows your chest to open up um, right away. So if you are using the blocks, place this first block in between the center of your shoulder blades and then release the weight of your uh, body down onto that block so that you feel this really nice expansion. And then you're gonna wanna locate your second block and use that to lower your head down on for a little bit of support. Palms can come down towards the earth. Feet can either stay extended, or I like to take a Supta Baddha Konasana variation here, bringing the soles of my feet towards one another so that we have a lot of opening here through our chest as well as through our hips. Any variation of fish or of reclined Supta Baddha Konasana is wonderful here. If neither of these are calling to you, find Shavasana pose. We just wanna to start today's practice on our backs so that we can feel a really nice opening through our front body. Once you arrive in your position, take a couple of breaths. Feel the inhale as it expands your chest, your physical heart space and feel your exhale, ground your back body down into the mat, into your props if you're using them. Right away, tapping into the current of our energy, of our breath. Feeling the breath flowing throughout each and every one of our cells, our joints, our fascia, our tendons, our bones, our muscles. And as you take a few moments here in your reclined posture of choice, I'm going to invite you to set an intention. So that can either be the intention that we set together at the beginning of our journey or maybe today you have something specific you'd like to dedicate your practice to, something you'd like to open your heart to. Seal that intention with just two more breaths. Inhale. And exhale. One more inhale. and exhale, nice job. Now we wanna work out of this posture just as carefully as we came into it. So first start to straighten your legs if they're not already straight. And then moving super slowly, super gently, you're gonna press up onto your forearms first. Pause here for a moment. Allow the blood to recirculate through your body for just a breath and then gently press yourself all the way back up. Nice job. Now you can go ahead and remove the blocks out of the way. If you had them there, same with your bolster or your block, just move them to the side or to the top of your mat. And we're gonna all come to a tabletop position.
On your inhale, sweep your right fingertips all the way up towards the sky. Again, feel that expansion through your chest, your shoulders open up here. And then exhale, thread the needle, right forearm and right cheek come all the way down towards the mat as you spiral your chest towards the left edge of your mat. Feel your breath. On your inhale, sweep your right fingertips back up towards the sky. Maybe find a smile on your way up. Inhale for expansion. And exhale to ground. Other side. This time, left fingertips sweep all the way up. Reach your fingertips as high as you can. And then exhale, thread the needle through left cheek. Left shoulder drop all the way down, allowing the back of your shoulder blade to rest towards the mat. And use your right hand to gently press the earth away from you so that your chest can spiral to the right. Long fluid breaths. On your next inhale, sweep your left fingertips back up towards the sky, counter twist. And exhale, lower your hand all the way down towards the mat. Great work. Fingertips spread wide. And then you're going to gently walk your, uh, your knees back a little bit and then restack your hips over top of your knees. We're coming into a puppy pose next. So this is another one that's going to probably take a little bit of adjusting and it'll look a little different for everyone. So just bear with me. We're gonna drop down onto our forearms first. Already feeling a little bit of a slope through our upper back. And then when you're ready, start to walk your fingertips out even further, straighten through your arms and allow your chin to drop all the way to the mat. If it's more comfortable, you can release your forehead down here. In our puppy pose, we want sort of like a tabletop position with our lower body. So our hips are stacking over our knees. And then we want this downward facing dog shape with our upper body. So your arms are nice and straight. Chest is pressing back towards your thighs and breath stays nice and fluid. This might feel like a lot of pressure on your shoulders. Try to breathe through it. You can always drop back down to your forearms if you need a little bit of a break, a little bit of support. Just one more inhale together. And exhale. Gently walk yourself back to a tabletop. And then we're gonna switch our palms here. Walk your right fingertips towards the back. Left fingertips follow. Just a little bit of a counter stretch here. And then we're gonna find with this reverse grip of our palms, we're gonna find a couple of cat cows. So the movement, the flexion through our spine might not be quite as big. That's okay. If this is uncomfortable, you can take a traditional grip or you can just try one arm at a time. Awesome job. Flip your grip, fingertips reach back towards the top of your mat and then slowly walk them forward, gripping the mat with all 10 finger pads. At this point in our journey, your wrists may be feeling a little fatigued. So check in right away. You want a gentle little lift through the base of your palms so that you are using your finger pads here to grip the mat rather than the pressure of your wrist and your full arm pressing down through the base of your wrist. So you almost have this little lift through the through the um, the very base of your palms. Just imagine that here. On your exhale, tuck your toes, lift your hips high, downward facing dog. Find a few breaths. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. 
Inhale, begin to lift your right leg all the way up towards the sky, three-legged dog. And exhale, step your right foot all the way through, low lunge. Right toe presses down. And notice all four corners of your right foot right away. As you press down through your right foot, engage your core and use your inhale to expand, lifting your fingertips high. And exhale, open up, warrior two. Inhale, straighten through your front leg. Next, we're gonna move into a triangle pose. So both legs are straight here. Try not to lock out through your bottom knee, just keep a little bit of a bend. If you have a block close by, go ahead and grab it and place it on the inside of your right foot. Arms return out to a T. First, you're gonna bump your hips towards the back edge of your mat and then begin to reach your fingertips forward. Once you can't reach any further, then allow your right hand to drop all the way down towards the block. Left fingertips reach up. Triangle pose. If you don't have a block here, you can rest your fingertips down on the earth, rest them gently on your shin, or you can even float your fingertips here. I really like to use the block here to allow for a little bit of leverage underneath my bottom arm so that I can lift even higher through my left arm. You'll feel a really nice expansion through your side body. Keep your breath moving, inhale. And exhale. Great work. Start to engage through your abdominals, through your obliques, and then use that engagement to lift back up. Arms come to a T, both arms extending out long, both legs straight. Setting up next for a star pose. So toes are gonna turn out, heels are gonna turn in, and you're gonna reach your fingertips away from one another. Big opening here. You can even reach your fingertips up towards the corners of your room. Full star pose. And then exhale, bring your palms down to frame your waist. Next, we're gonna set up for a um, goddess pose. So you're gonna have to narrow your stance most likely just a little bit here. Heels come in, toes come out, and then sink down nice and low. Expansion and opening through your hips, sinking sensation as you ground down. And try to keep the opening through your chest that we've been creating. Palms can come up. You can even find a mudra here with your fingertips if that's comfortable. Sometimes finding this mudra allows us to bring our focus to something other than discomfort through our body. Building strength, strength through your leg muscles here. Just two more breaths, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Big inhale, fingertips reach star pose. And then as you exhale, release your hands down. Next, we're gonna set up for a pyramid pose. So right toes turn forward, back foot is gonna step up. You want your feet about hips width distance apart, maybe a little bit wider if that's more comfortable. Your right toes are facing forward and your back foot is at about 10 o'clock. So we're in like a narrow warrior one stance with our legs here. Hands stay at your hips as you rotate them towards the top of your mat and then release your fingertips up towards the sky. On your exhale, frame your front foot, rain your fingertips all the way down. You can come into a bend with your right leg. You can also use your blocks here or your props, whatever you've got. Find your breath. On your next inhale, hands come back to your waistline. Lift up halfway. One more breath, inhale. And exhale, step your back foot up to meet your front mountain pose. Nice job. 
Inhale, sweep your fingertips high. And exhale, palms come through heart center. One more time, even bigger sweep, fingertips reach, reach, reach. And this time as palms come through center, we'll come straight down into our forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms and step or take a giant hop back into your high plank. Great work. Knees lifted or lowered, chaturanga. Cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. Inhale, start to peel your left heel up towards the sky. And as you exhale, slowly stamp your left foot in between your hands. Find a lightness through your fingertip, a grounding through your left foot, and use your expansive inhale to lift your fingertips high. High crescent lunge. Inhale to reach just a little higher. And exhale, open all the way up warrior two. You'll find this opening through your hips and the grounding through your front leg. Fingertips reaching front to back. Breathe here in this posture. Notice what it feels like. Next, we're gonna set up for our triangle pose. So as you straighten through your front leg, go there in your mind's eye first. You know, first we wanna bump our hips to the back, then we wanna reach our fingertips. If you do have a block and you found it useful on the other side, set that up first, and then gently move into this posture with lots of intention. Left arm lowers all the way down, right fingertips reach high. The other advantage to using the block here is if you're dumping your weight into your bottom arm, you'll notice your whole um, alignment kind of comes out of whack here, or it's easy for your alignment to come out of whack. By lifting this up, you not only engage your legs a little bit more because you're not dumping your weight down, but you can also keep your chest expanded, your right shoulder blade pressing back. And then you can feel this lightness through your top arm. Notice your back foot. You wanna be pressing your weight through the outside edge of your back foot, as well as through your front foot. Continue to breathe here. Right away, engage your oblique muscles. Lift yourself up to a T. Fingertips reach side to side. Keep your legs exactly where they are for just one breath. On your exhale, find a star pose. Toes turn out. Fingertips reach towards the corners of your room. You can play around with your foot position here. Sometimes it's comfortable to keep your feet towards parallel. You can keep your toes turned in slightly, but you just want to be mindful of your back and your lower hips. So find a position that's comfortable for you. And then on your exhale, release your fingertips behind your back. Interlace your palms and press your knuckles towards the earth. Big breath in. And exhale, come into a forward fold with a shoulder rinse. So this is where it can be really um, beneficial to have your, your toes turned in a little bit. Heels pressing out, that'll help you to find a nice firm foundation through the base of your posture. Knuckles continue to press up towards the sky and see if you can sew together the base of your wrists. They'll probably have a tendency to want to kind of fall away from one another. Sew them together and notice what that feels like through your shoulder blades. Release your fingertips down towards the earth. If you have your block still handy, you can see if you can reach your forehead or the crown of your head down towards your block. Find a little bit of release here. And then palms can either rest under your shoulders or you can walk your fingertips behind you. Lots of options. Slow 
slowly walk your hands back underneath your shoulders. If they're not there, catch your hips and lift up halfway. Inhale to rise all the way to standing. And then we're gonna set up for pyramid pose on the other side. Left toes turn forward, back foot steps up and out. So you're taking up about half of the length of your mat here and squaring your hips towards the front. Inhale to reach high. And exhale to surrender as you fold over your left leg. Again, feel free to utilize your blocks here. Micro bend through your front leg. Try not to lock out your knee. Beautiful. When you're ready, lift up halfway. Hands are gonna come towards your hips and then rise all the way to standing. Shoulder blades loop up, back and down and then back foot steps up, palms towards heart center, mountain pose. Great work. Inhale, sweep your fingertips high. Biggest reach of your whole day so far. And exhale, forward fold, rain your fingertips down towards the earth. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms, and this time you're just gonna step back to a tabletop, so drop your knees down. Beautiful job. Now rock back onto your left hip and swing your legs out long in front of you. Bring your block with you if you've got one. We're gonna set up next for a couple of bridge variations. So recline all the way onto your backs. Take a moment to get comfortable here. And then right away, we're gonna set up for bridge. First option would be to just place the block on either the lowest or the medium setting right underneath your sacrum. So right around your belt line, it should feel really nice. You want this bottom edge of your block to press right on the base of your sacrum and it likely will feel like a little bit of release for your sacrum, should feel good. You can just hang out here for the entire duration of our bridge variations if this is working for you. If you want a little bit more fire, you wanna power up through your glutes, then ditch the block. You're gonna press down through both feet Hands are gonna press down towards the earth and lift your hips all the way up. You want this movement to come from the base of your glutes. If you have knee discomfort, it can be helpful to spread your legs out just a little bit wider. Otherwise, you could keep them parallel, just play around. Again, it's gonna be a little different for everyone. You can use the base of your palms pressing down to allow you to lift your chest even higher. Big expansion with each inhale. And let it go with your exhale. Rolling down one vertebrae at a time. Great work. All right, so we're gonna do that a couple more times. You have two options now. The last option would be a full wheel pose. So if you want to just stick with your bridge, either supported or without the block, stick there. If you wanna try your wheel on, it's very similar. So you're gonna really ground down through the soles of your feet. The main movement, no matter what variation we're doing here, is lifting our hips by engaging our glutes. So keep that in mind with, with whichever option you're choosing. If you want to play around with wheel, you're gonna bring your hands to frame your ears. Palms are gonna face backwards. So just like we did in our reverse um, when we reversed our grip in our tabletop and our cat cow, it's that same sensation, that big stretch through your forearm and your wrists. And then first engage your glutes as you lift your hips up towards a bridge pose, then begin to press down through the base of your wrists and slowly start to straighten your arms all the way up. Big lift through your chest. Breathe here. You can play around with walking your hands closer towards your feet. And when you're ready to come out, 
Gently tuck your chin in towards your chest. Bend through your elbows first, then roll one vertebrae at a time. Keep your back protected for this whole movement. And then release your palms down. Beautiful, beautiful job. We're gonna do one more variation of bridge. You take your pick. You know your options at this point. Take a breath. And then exhale, find your variation. We're here for five breaths. Commit to the expansion in your chest. Commit to the engagement through your glutes. And commit to the length of your breath. Okay, close your eyes if it helps. Turning up the corners of your mouth helps also. Just two more, inhale. And exhale. One more, inhale. And exhale, roll all the way down. Move super, super, super slow. Releasing your spine towards the earth. And then let it go. When you're ready, cross your right ankle over top of your left. I'm gonna set up for a recline pigeon pose. Dial your hands behind the back of your left leg. And you can find stillness or rock a little bit side to side. Sending your breath to your hip creases here, keeping your chest lifted and proud. Slowly release your right foot down towards the mat and you're just gonna switch it out. Left foot crosses over your right and then dial your hands behind your right thigh and gently squeeze it in towards your chest. Nice job. Last posture for today, we're gonna find a happy baby pose. So dial your hands to the inside arches um, of your feet, or today I'm gonna to invite you to try on your thighs. So bring your hands to your inner thighs and gently pull down. Sometimes this variation can be a little bit extra supportive and feel nice on our backs, rather than trying to dial our hands all the way to our feet which lifts your um, lower tailbone off of the mat. So take your pick. One is not better than the other. Make it feel good. You can play around with straightening one leg. If I didn't have a window here, maybe the other. And then gently pull both knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a giant hug, hedgehog pose. Chin lifts up towards your uh, knees. Use a big breath in here. And an exhale to surrender into any final resting posture that feels right for you. You can find Shavasana. I'm going to find a Supta Baddha Konasana. You take your pick. Find several breaths here as you wind down your practice. If you set an intention at the very beginning of today's flow, return to that now. Directing your breath to something that you're grateful for Sometimes in these moments of stillness, it can be difficult to be still. So by thinking of something we're grateful for and just focusing on that and on the simplicity of our inhale and our exhale, oftentimes we can find ourselves settling down just a little bit, grounding down into the mats, slowing the rate of our heart, slowing the racing thoughts in our mind, and ultimately just becoming a little bit more connected. A 
We'll close today with one breath in. Then one really big cleansing breath out. <sighs> Namaste, yogis.